Hallelujah! It's day 14. Praise the Lord. Greetings to you in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's day 14 and it is actually on this wonderful day that we gather together in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ to just, you know, share about these things and particularly to crush the spirit of disappointment, to crush the spirit of frustration, to crush every power that may seek to delay you or frustrate you or bring stagnation in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I am Malcolm David and we are going to go through. The word of God says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23, it says, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed. He took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray for the communion in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for this bread. We pray for this cup. We ask that God, you may grant us, Lord, time, even in your presence, to read your word and to meditate upon it. We pray that, Lord, even you will help us to go through the six pack plus and read all the seven chapters of the Bible today and enable us to move with the speed that you desire us to go. So, Father, we commit this uh, time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's partake of the bread together. Let's partake of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Come on, share the video. Invite your friends into the video so that many more can be able to connect into this wonderful broadcast. And we want to bless the Lord because of His goodness and His mercy and His love and His kindness and His majesty. And we just want to bless the Lord for His goodness and His mercy and His love. For He answers prayer with awesome deeds and we give you praise we give him all the adoration we give him all the worship we give him all the glory hallelujah we give glory to god for he is a good god he is a mighty god mighty god we come to declare speed in the name of jesus christ we move on to proclaim the word of God in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bring greetings to you and also just continue to give glory to God for giving us grace to be able to continue in the journey of 150 days of Psalms. Psalm, Psalm 14 says, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt they are corrupt, their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned aside, they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Verse 4. Will the evil doers never learn? Those who devour my people as men eat bread. And who do not call on the Lord. They are overwhelmed with dread, for God is in the present, is its present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Psalm 14, verse 7. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. I love what it says in verse 4. When will 
uh, where he said that, Will evil doers never learn? Those who devour my people as men eat bread and do not call on the Lord. Beloved, there are powers of darkness that are bent to eat you like bread. You know, like they just want to bring delay, frustration, all sorts of things. And God desires that in 2022, you move with speed. And the speed that God is going to release to you will cause you to move easily. We say in season 5, we move easily. Because the Lord is in the presence is present in the company of the righteous. I come to mention that every time you're facing a situation or a circumstance, mention these words only. Don't mention your words, don't mention your thoughts, don't mention what you think, or don't mention even what you can do. Mention the words of the Lord. That they are overwhelmed with dread. Delay is overwhelmed with dread. Frustration is overwhelmed with dread. For God is in the presence of the company. Of the righteous. God is present in the company of the righteous. Amen. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. Every power that may seek to bring delay in your life, every problem that has brought that was brought into your life through your association with the spirit of delay and frustration must be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. Let that power be destroyed right now. Every power of delay, every power of frustration, let it receive complete, let it complete, complete defeat in the name of Jesus. For the Lord will overwhelm them with dread in the name of Jesus Christ. It says that the Lord will over dread, will, will, will overwhelm them. And dread will be upon them. For God is in the is present in the company of the righteous. We move on to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4. We are proclaiming the word of God. Meditating on it. Magnifying the Lord over it. Declaring it and making sure that we read the word of God. Proverbs 4. It says, Listen my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and only child of my mother, he taught me and said, lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. I'm reading from the NIV 20, uh, 1984 version. Verse 6. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Esteem her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will set a garland of grace on your head and present you with a crown of splendor. Listen, my son, accept what I say and the years of your life will be many. Verse 11. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set your foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. For they cannot sleep till they do evil. They are robbed of slumber till they make someone fall. Proverbs 4.17 They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous, verse 18, is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They don't know what makes them stumble. Proverbs 4 verse 20 My son, Pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they, they are life to those who find them. And health to a man's whole body. Above all else, 
guard your heart. For it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Verse 25. Let your eyes look straight ahead and take only ways that are firm. Don't swerve to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Beloved, daily reading of Proverbs has proven to be one of the most powerful ways to cause yourself to rise in the level of the Word of God in the Spirit. The Word of God is a sword. You must know that the Word of God is a sword. It cuts to the soul and the spirit, to the dividing of the joints and the marrow, and judging the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So every time you're reading God's word, that is the operation that is happening in the spirit. The word of God in Ephesians 6 verse 10, uh, 10 down there to 18 is also a weapon in the place of prayer, in the place of spiritual warfare. We shared about eight, eight aspects of prayer. And one of the prayers known as spiritual warfare is a prayer that you need to make with the word of God richly in your heart. I want you to pray right now and cancel all the activities of the spirit of delay because the speed of God, when it comes upon you, it's like the speed that we read in the book of Exodus. When we read and we saw in this book of Exodus, we saw it in the book of Exodus. And in the book of Exodus chapter 13, he told the people, eat with your clock tucked in your belt. Because the speed of God, when it comes, you just move swiftly into your agenda. I pray for you today. I cancel all the activities and powers of the spirit of delay over your life. In the name of Jesus, you shall experience speed from the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. It says, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know what they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Don't be hasty with your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. As a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of a fool when there are many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. Verse 5. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And don't protest to the temple messenger, my vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, stand in awe of God. Verse 8. If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, don't be surprised at such things. For one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. Whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. Verse number 11. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owner except to feast his eyes on them? Verse 12. The sleep of a laborer is sweet. Whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of a rich man permits him no sleep. I have seen... A grievous evil under the sun. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner. Or wealth lost through some misfortune so that he, when he has a son, there is nothing left for him. Naked a man comes from the mother's womb. And as he comes, so he departs. He takes nothing. 
from his labor and when and that he can carry in his hand verse 16 this too is a grievous evil as a man comes so he departs and what does he gain since he toils for the wind verse 17 all his days he eats in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. Then I realized that it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink and find satisfaction in the toilsome labor under the, under the sun during the few days of life God has given him, for this is his lot. Verse 19, Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his Lord and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with the gladness of heart. Beloved, this is the kind of speed that God is going to bring to you in, 20, in 22. That God is going to cause you to seldom reflect on the days of your life. But he will cause you to be occupied with the gladness of heart. And if you remain in the word of God, reading it and memorizing it daily and constantly, no matter what is coming into your life, God, by his power and authority, has the capacity to lift you into a new dimension where you seldom reflect on the days of your life, but God keeps you occupied with the gladness of heart. So that indeed you may be able to move with speed and not stagnation. That God will enable you to experience speed and that you will move easily. Just like in the days of Elijah. When Elijah prayed that the rain would come and he went and told the king, King, please saddle your horse and run. Get into your chariot and run. Because the rain, I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. And it says that when Ahab was on the way, that Elijah overtook Ahab who was in a chariot. Elijah overtook Ahab. The overtaking anointing is coming upon us in 2022. We are believing God and we are already experiencing it day by day by day by day. Signs and wonders, miracles, signs and wonders. Every single day we trust God for signs and wonders. Even upon you, my sister Ginger. Signs and wonders are your portion in Kansas, in the name of Jesus. Let the presence of God be there evidently to show you that he is God all by himself. We go now to the book of Exodus, chapter 14. Exodus 14. What a joy to be able to read these words. I love the way Exodus 13, 1 starts and Exodus 14, 1 starts. It's the same verse. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, I continue to pray for you, but may your ears be attentive to hear. May your ears be open to hear what the Lord is saying. As you read the word of God, the Lord said to Moses, May the Lord say to you in Jesus' name, Verse 2, tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Piharithos between Migdol and the sea. They are to camp by the sea, directly opposite Baal Zephon. Verse 3, Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, We have done. We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. 
So he had his chariot made ready, and he took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots along with all other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. We see now Pharaoh's heart is hardened by God. And he picks the best chariots, all the best chariots, including the armored vehicles, including the tanks, including all types of best vehicles that were there for the military. Pharaoh had them. And he said, let's go. <laughs> verse 9 says, verse 8 says, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who are marching out boldly. In 2022, may you march out boldly in the name of Jesus. In 2022, may you march out boldly in the name of Jesus. Whatever year you are watching this broadcast, march out boldly in the name of Jesus. No matter if Pharaoh is pursuing you, his heart will be hardened that God will gain glory. No more delay over your life in the name of Jesus. There shall be no more delay in your matter. God is at work. So it continues to say, The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses, Chariots, horsemen, and troops pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near Pihoroth, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Then Moses they, they say to Moses, was it because we have no, there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out here to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Verse 12. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people don't be afraid stand firm and you will see the deliverance the lord will bring you today the egyptians you see today you will never see again i pray for you today that you will march out boldly that you will stand firm because the Lord says to you in 2022 that stand firm and be bold because the Lord will bring you deliverance on this day and he will bring to you today deliverance that the Egyptians you see today, you'll not see them again. Pray with understanding and declare, O oh Lord, arise. O oh Lord, arise. The Egyptians I see today in my life, I will not see them again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That pain you're going through right now is coming to an end. The Lord is causing it to come to an end right now in the name of Jesus. For the Lord will bring victory to you. It says in verse 14, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. In the speed that God brings, we need to be still and remain still. Because that is how God fights for us. In our battle, we don't fight by movement. In our battle, we stand. It says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 downward. It says that having done everything to do, stand therefore with the belt of truth guard upon your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness upon your upon your. Upon your chest. Let me tell you, beloved, that every matter that we must fight, it could be even a challenge in your marriage. It could be a challenge in your finances. It could be a challenge in your nation. You need to stand still. You need to be 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 still. In First Samuel chapter 12, Verse 16. It says, Now then, stand still and see this great thing the Lord is about to do before your very eyes. 
1 Samuel 12, 16. The same word that is coming to us, that is saying to us clearly, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Verse 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch over and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them and I will gain through glory through Pharaoh and his army through his chariots and his horsemen. Then in verse number 19, it says, the verse 18 says, The Egyptians will know that I am God when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. It says, verse 19, Then the angel of the Lord, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. Coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel, throughout the night, the wind brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. Let me pause here and mention something. The moment when God says that I will deliver you, you need only to be still, is the time he's commanding the angels charge over you. He commanded the angels charge over Israel and he said that the angel that was in front of them, then now the angel moved to the back. And when the angel moved to the back, there was a war, there was a cloud of fire, a cloud that turned into darkness in the night, and it became night. It became it became bright in the sight of the Israelites. God indeed is faithful, and we can see in this that He's a God of process. You may look at it as a delay, but God is working on it. That's why it did not happen like we see in the movies that Moses stretched his rod and then immediately the water comes apart. No, it was a process. It was a whole night. Listen to verse, four, uh, verse 24. During the last watch of the night, the last watch of the night, this is about 4 a.m. in the morning. 3 a.m., 4 a.m. there. That's the last watch. Of the night during that last watch of the night the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion there are some weapons of the Lord that he employs there are some weapons of God that are powerful confusion is one of them in the book of Genesis chapter 11 we see what happened there when the people were trying to build a tower that was going to go high, high, high up to heaven. God caused confusion to come upon them. This is the same confusion the Lord is setting in the nations for anyone that claims to be God. Anyone that takes the place of Jesus, even a church, even an individual, the Lord looks from his pillar of cloud today. And throws it into confusion in the name of Jesus. Be not afraid, beloved. In this year, the Lord will order your steps. In this year, God will order your steps. He will order your steps as we move on. In Exodus 23, 27, we will read that the Lord says, I will send terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. Exodus 23, 27. I come to mention to you today, 
every kind of power, every activity, every power of the spirit of delay, of the spirit of frustration in your life, right now we send the confusion of the Lord upon it in Jesus' name. Every power that is pursuing you from the other year and the other year, that every year around this time, you are already experiencing delay in this area and that area. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, we mention a release in the realm of the Spirit that you will walk into your promised land victoriously. It says in verse 25, Exodus 14, that he made the wheels of their chariots came off that they had drive, they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Verse 27, Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak, so this process took place between 4 a.m., 3 a.m. and morning. At daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Israelites. The people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. We thank God for that word. We move on to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. That's where we are. Speed is your portion. You are receiving speed from the Lord. It says, since we have promises, we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Verse 2. Make room for us in your hearts. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have exploited no one. I do not say this to condemn you. I have said before that you have such a place in our hearts that we would live or die with you. Verse 4. I have great confidence in you. I take great pride in you. I am greatly encouraged. In all our troubles, my joy knows no bounds. For when we came into Macedonia, this body of ours had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on outside fears within verse 6 but god who comforts the downcast comforted us by the coming of titus and not only by his coming but also by the comfort you had given him he told us about your longing for me your deep sorrow your ardent concern for me so that my joy was greater than ever verse 8 even if i caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Verse 9. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended and were not harmed in any way by us. Verse number 10. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation. In the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 18, it says, When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, 
So then God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. If you are told you've been having any godly sorrow, then you know it leads you to repentance. It leads you to love salvation after repentance and leaves no regrets. But worldly sorrow brings death. Verse number 10, it said, verse 11, See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. That, what earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern. What readiness to see justice done. At every point, you have proved yourself to be innocent of this matter. So even though I wrote to you, it was not on account of one who did wrong, or the third of the injured party, but rather that before God, you could see for yourselves how devoted to us you are, verse 13. By all this, we are encouraged. In addition to our own encouragement, we were especially delighted to see how happy Titus was because his spirit has been refreshed by all of you. Verse 14. <laughs> I had boasted to him about you. And you have not embarrassed me, but just as everything we say to you was true, so our boasting about you to Titus has proved to be true as well. And his affection for you is all the greater when he remembers that we are all obedient, receiving him with fear and trembling. I am glad I can have complete confidence in you. What a wonderful letter to the Corinthians. We now go on to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. I mentioned to you that the book of Ephesians, the book of Revelation, the book of Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes is the accompaniment of the journey of 150 days of Psalms. For every chapter we read in the book of Psalms, we pick a chapter of Proverbs, a chapter of Ecclesiastes, a chapter of Ephesians, and a chapter of Revelation. And if a chapter, if, if any of that book comes to an end, we just continue from the top. And that way the Lord is helping us. And we are seeing how the scripture, no matter where you read, it's connected. It's connected. In the Psalms, we read about the, the, the Egyptians. We read about how they were swallowed by the water. And in Exodus, we have seen that. We go now to the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2. A beautiful chapter. You need to know this chapter in your witnessing. So that when you are witnessing to others, you know what exactly it means to be made alive in Christ. Because we were dead to our transgressions. When you are a sinner, when you are rebellious, when you are doing things that did not glorify God, then by Christ you were made alive. So listen to this. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. And the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in his mercy, made us alive in Christ. Oh, Jesus. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us up with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, it's not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone can boast. 
For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who were Gentiles and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that is done in the body by hands of men. Verse 12 says, Remember that at a time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants, the promises, the hope, without hope and without God in the world. It shows the sorrowful state of a sinner, one without hope, without the promise, without citizenship in heaven. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ, verse 14. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with his commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man, out of the two, thus making peace. And this one body was to reconcile both of them, to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away, and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too were built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by the Spirit. Oh my God, I'm a dwelling of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a joy. We go now to Revelation 16. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16. Glory be to God. Divine speed is your portion. Verse 1. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go, pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth. And ugly and painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. Verse 4. The third angel poured out his bowl, on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, You are just in these judgments, you who are and who are the Holy One, because you are so judged, for they have shed the blood of your saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. Verse 17, and I heard the altar respond. Before I continue, let me mention that altars have voice. There are uh, chapters and verses where we shared about altars, shared a lot of teaching in that, and they are there in the YouTube channel. You can check it out on, on the channel 150 Days of Psalms. I did some teaching on altars. And you can just browse there and be able to see. Or write to me on WhatsApp. Or write in the comments and I will send you the link. So I had the altar respond. Jesus responds to us. But here we are reading that I heard the altar respond. 
You even see that in Revelation 6. Shows us about the altar. We see the altar. Revelation 6, 9. Revelation 14, verse 18. If you want to see more about the altar in heaven, it's there. And this altar in heaven, we are able to connect with it through prayer, through fasting. We are able to connect with this altar. And this altar responds. I come to speak to you today. May the altar in heaven respond over your matter in this year and beyond. In the name of Jesus, may the altar in heaven speak on your behalf. Let it respond in on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, may you find speed and finality. No more delay. May the Lord just cause you to move with a speed that comes from him. Into the agenda of what he purposed for you. Revelation 16, 7. And I heard the altar respond. Yes. Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun. And the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. But they refused to repent and glorify him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And the kingdom was plundered into darkness. Men know their tongues in agony. And cast the God of heaven because of the pains and their sores. But they refused to repent of what they had done. Revelation 16, 12. The sixth angel poured out his bowl onto the great river Euphrates. And its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the, from the east. Verse 13. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs they came out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets these are the spirits of demons performing miraculous signs and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for battle on the great day of god almighty behold i come like a thief blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Verse 16. Then they gathered kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done! Then there came slashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it had ever occurred since man had been on earth. So tremendous was the earthquake. The great city split into three parts and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the Great and gave the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones at about a hundred pounds each fell upon men, and they cast God on the account of the plague of hail, because the plague was so terrible. Beloved, that is the seventh chapter we've read of the six part plans. I come to invite you now that does not know the Lord to come to the Lord. I make this altar call to you. The word of God says in Romans 10 verse 9 that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I pray for you today that you shall truly be saved. I want you to pray this prayer after me and receive salvation. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead. Write my name 
in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you pray that prayer, drop me an inbox, write to me, and that I will be able to get back to you and pray with you some more. But let's just pray for you and even pray as we conclude the broadcast. We also want to pray for the giving, we want to pray for the, the time of connecting with God like this, and the Lord will help us. As we continue to trust Him for this journey of 150 days of Psalms, that God is helping us every time. The Lord is helping us to constantly and daily be able to do this for his glory. Now, our Father, I want to pray for the partners and the viewers all over the world. I want to pray for them that, Lord, your hand is going to be upon them mightily. As you can, Lord, I pray that you stretch your hand upon the new beloved, the new born-again people, the one who have given their lives to Christ, O Lord. I pray that your hand will be upon us in a mighty way. I pray that, Lord, your spirit will continue to be with us and for us. And we pray that God will see you in a way that only you can. Only minister to us, Lord. So we continue to pray against confusion that the enemy may want to send to us. For we know he's a counterfeit and a chief and a, and a cheat, O oh God. We know that he likes to try to look like he's advancing and winning. But Father, we pray that he shall never win. Deception shall never win. Fear shall never win. Sickness shall never win. Lord, we pray that your hand will be upon us, O God. So we trust now, Lord, as we continue to walk in your goodness and in your favor, the Lord will shine your light upon us in every way. So we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, that marks the end of today's broadcast. I am Malcolm David. Thank you so much, Sister Ginger, for staying through till the end of today's broadcast. God bless you and have a wonderful time. Have a wonderful day if it's day where you are in Jesus' name. It's 1.47 in the p.m. on the 11th day of 2022. We bless the Lord. Shalom.